वेलकम टू सेंटर फॉर ऑनलाइन एजुकेशन उत्तर प्रदेश लोकल यूनिवर्सिटी प्रयागराज फ्रेंड्स ऑन द सीरीज ऑफ रिसर्च मेथोलॉजी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सप्लोर अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज नोन एज हाइपोथेसिस टेस्टिंग एज यू ऑल नो दैट हाइपोथेसिस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट वेयर अ रिसर्चर हैज टू चेक दैट वॉट एवर प्रॉब्लम ही इज फेसिंग एंड वॉट आर द गैप्स इन रिव्यू ऑफ लिटरेचर by the help of hypothesis he can test and explore the various dimension now the first thing is this that what is hypothesis the question says that hypothesis is an educated guess about something in the world around you means it is an educated guess that we used to guess that there is something which is being happening whether it is happening or not is going to be tested by some statistical tools now it should be testable either by experiments or observation means whatever educated guess you have made is going to be tested by the help of experiment or observation if it is going to be tested by experiment you have to go with the different statistical tools or if you are going to do with the observation method you have to put different behavior skills for the conclusion that this is the hypothesis and this is been tested whether it is been accepted or not now for example you can say that a new vaccine will work we have gone through covid stages so we have seen that there are different vaccines which is in came came over there so whether that new vaccine will work or not this can easily be checked by the help of hypothesis then price of share in the stock market there are numerous shares in the stock market whether the price of the share is going to increase or whether the price of the share is going to decrease in the near future this can easily be tested by the help of hypothesis whether new launch product will be successful or not a company is launching a new product and that product will be successful or not it can easily be tested by the help of hypothesis so friends here hypothesis is an educated guess and it should be testable either by experiment and observation now you see that what are the uses of hypothesis the first one is decision making a researcher has to make decision that what is good what is bad whether something is right or wrong so whenever a researcher has to take a decision about right wrong good bad he has to go with the hypothesis he has to frame a hypothesis and check that hypothesis that whether it is acceptable or not agriculture in the field of agriculture in the field of agriculture sciences a lot of new researcher new exploration innovations are being made so in the field of agriculture hypothesis is very important then business if you are doing a business there is a lot of scope there is lot of exploration which is being done new things are going to be there innovations are being made so for all the innovations hypothesis is being used to say that whether it is acceptable or not then science in the science we have got workable hypothesis where we used to make a hypothesis and we used to see that whether that is being acceptable or not and on the basis of that we conclude our result then the behavior there are different behavioral studies behavioral science studies in which hypothesis is very important and hypothesis concludes that whether something is acceptable or whether something is rejected now scientific hypothesis as i have told you that hypothesis is being made in all the studies whether it is science behavior agriculture so here when we talk about scientific hypothesis we used to say that it is a trial solution to a problem as a hypothesis often called as an educated guess because it is provide a suggested solution based on the evidence however some scientists reject the term educated guess as incorrect experiments may be test and reject several hypotheses before solving the problem here in the scientific hypothesis we say that it is an educated guess right means we are guessing something and this guess work is based on some education some primary knowledge so here some scientists used to reject that it is not a term which is known as educated guess it is a hypothesis hypothesis 
is being framed on the basis of certain population and sample. So, for a scientific hypothesis, we say that we used to make experiment and on the basis of that experiments, we used to accept or reject the fact. If we are accepting the fact, we say that our hypothesis is being accepted and if we reject the fact, we say that our hypothesis is being rejected. Now, working hypothesis. As I have told you that in scientific study, we used to have a scientific hypothesis while in different other studies, we have got working hypothesis. Working hypothesis are often used as a conceptual framework in a quantitative research. So whenever we are doing behavior research, we have to take a working hypothesis. On the basis of frames, we used to say that these types of hypotheses are being framed. And according to changes in the behavior of a human being, we used to change the hypothesis. Therefore, it is known as the working hypothesis. Now, what are the types of hypothesis? There are two types of hypothesis. The first one is null hypothesis. Null hypothesis says that P is equal to P is equal to P0, right? So if you are going to take an example, you have got two variables, A and variable B. Clear? If we say that for a specific study, A behavior is independent and B is independent, means the impact of A on B is nil, and the behavior of B on A is nil. Both the variables are important in the study, but the impact of A on B is zero, and the impact of B on A is zero, means both variables are independent, and if we frame this, we say it is a null hypothesis. Null hypothesis is made up from the population. For example, you have a population, if you are working in a study of Uttar Pradesh, your whole population will be Uttar Pradesh. But it is a big state. So you have to take some samples. You have taken three cities, four cities. So this is your sample. Right? This is your sample. The cities you have taken. So here, when we talk about null hypothesis, we say that there is no difference between the sample and the population means sample is somewhat equal to the population. Sample, whatever sample we are taking is equal to the population. So whenever we write that there is no difference between sample and population or there are different variables and both the variables are independent, we say it is a null hypothesis. Now alternative hypothesis. In alternative hypothesis, it is just the opposite of the null hypothesis. We used to say that in case of A and B, both are dependent. It means any factor of A has a direct impact on the factor B and any factor of B has a direct impact on the factor A. So here you can see over here, it might be more or less, it might be not equal to. So all three sciences are here, where in null hypothesis, only equal to sign is being taken into consideration. So here, types of hypothesis are here. So here, one more important consideration is being taken into care, that is, there are different errors. When we solve our hypothesis, it might be there are two types of error which a researcher can have. The first one is type one error. Right? It is also known as false positive. Positive sign is this. Right? So, as you know, these are two types of hypothesis, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Now, the type 1 error which a researcher can face means false positive. If your hypothesis, null hypothesis is being accepted, but actually it is a false means you have to accept the null hypothesis, but due to sample error, you have not accepted null hypothesis, you have accepted the alternative hypothesis, then there is a type 1 error which a researcher used to face. Then you have got 
type to where. It is also known as false negative. Right? So here what happened that our null hypothesis is being rejected but actually it is being accepted but due to sampling error we have accepted it we say that it is a type 2 error so it is also known as false negative because this uh, hypothesis is being accepted while this is not the real case means our alternative hypothesis is right but we have accepted our null hypothesis so these are the two types of errors which a researcher used to face and he should have to consider the sampling error to rectify these errors. Now types of null hypothesis. There is simple hypothesis in it is completely specific the population distribution. In this method the sampling distribution is the function of a sample size. When we talk about simple hypothesis we say that whatever our sample size is we are going to frame our hypothesis on the basis of that sample only. Means whatever our sample and the specific sample is being considered for framing of the hypothesis. Second one is known as composite hypothesis. The composite hypothesis is one of that that does not completely specify the population distribution. Means here composite hypothesis says that we have got a population but the hypothesis which we are framing for our study doesn't take all the parameters which are there in the population. We are taking the sample and on that sample we are specifying certain things and on that certain things we are taking our hypothesis. It is not completely to the specific data which is being there. Then the third one is exact hypothesis. Whenever we frame a hypothesis with a certain specific value, we say that it is an exact hypothesis. Exact hypothesis defines the exact value of the parameter. For example, mu is equal to 50. If we are talking about certain values and we say that all the people who are born up till the age of 9, 20 years, we used to say that it is an exact hypothesis because all the people who are of age group 20 years are going to be considered for that sample and the hypothesis frame on the basis of that only. Then in exact hypothesis, when we make certain data into certain interval, class interval, and we used to say that it will be more than that or less than that, we used to say that it is an exact hypothesis. This type of hypothesis does not define the exact value of the parameters, but it does not denote the specific range of interval. For example, mu is more than 50 or less than 60, means here there is a range. All the people who are of the age group 18 to 45 will be considered for this. So the people who are more than 18 years will also be taking the sample size. All those who are less than 60 years will also be considered for the sample size. Here the hypothesis, the data which we are going to take, the hypothesis we are, we are framing is inexact. It is not specific. It is not exact. It is not exact. Therefore, we used to say that it is an inexact hypothesis. Now, hypothesis testing. This is one of the most important fundamental. Why? Because whenever we are going to do any research, we have to frame a hypothesis. Now, one thing I want to make it clear over here is this, that whenever you are conducting any exploratory study, whenever a researcher is conducting an exploratory study, he should avoid making hypothesis. Why? Because whenever you are saying that you are exploring certain thing, if I say that you have to go 500 kilometers to west and you have to find certain agricultural products, you are for the first time going towards west 500 kilometer. So you don't know that what are the products you are going to get over there. What are the difficulties you are finding at that place? What is hypothesis? Hypothesis is a one-line statement of problem. 
which you are going to test. So when you don't know about the problems, how you are going to frame a hypothesis? So for an exploratory study, I always used to say that a researcher should avoid making any hypothesis, framing any hypothesis, right? So there are five main steps in hypothesis testing. The first one is that the state your research hypothesis as a null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis L0 or HA or H1. So whenever we are going to start or we are going to test the hypothesis, the first thing we required is to make our hypothesis. So as I have told you, there are two types of hypothesis, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. So null hypothesis says that there is no difference between the population and the sample, while the alternative hypothesis is just opposite of the null hypothesis, where we say that there is a difference between the sample and the population. So first of all, you have to do is this, that you have to frame a hypothesis, and from that hypothesis, you have to create a null hypothesis. Then second one is collection of the data. After framing of the hypothesis, you are going to start to collect the data. This data will be collected by the primary sources, whether it will be questionnaire, whether it will be schedule, whether it will be from observation method, but you have to collect the data. And after collection of data, you have to perform an appropriate statistical test. There are different types of statistical tests by which you can test your hypothesis. Chi-square test is a test in which you can directly test your hypothesis on the basis of three parameters, that is test of independence, test of goodness of fit, and test of homogeneity. Regression test, correlation test, X test, Z test, F test, T test, student T test, sampling test. There are different tests by which you can test your hypothesis. Then acceptance or rejection of hypothesis. So whenever we used to have a statistical test, we make two things, that is degree of freedom and level of significance. And on that degree of freedom and level of significance, we used to accept or reject the hypothesis. For scientific study, we used to take 1% level of significance. While for behavioral study, we used to take 5% of levels of significance, right? So why? Because in scientific study, it is a closed study. You cannot change various things because the result will be different. But in behavioral studies, there is a changes of 5%, up to 5% the behavioral changes of a person from one place to another. Right? So on the basis of that, you can accept or reject the hypothesis. And the last one is present the finding of the result and the discussion that if your hypothesis has been accepted, why it is being accepted? and what is the outcome of that hypothesis in the result. Clear? So first thing is that, that you have to make an hypothesis. You have to make an hypothesis H0. This is null hypothesis. You have to make a null hypothesis. And on the basis of that null hypothesis, you are going to make an alternative hypothesis. A means alternative hypothesis or H1 is also an alternative hypothesis, okay? This is alternative hypothesis, right? So on the basis of that hypothesis, you are going to collect the data. If you say that all the people, all farmers in UP, producers rice, and on the production of rice, there are two factors. That is rainfall and fertilizer. Right? So, this is factor A and this is factor B. As I told you that if both the factors are independent, means for the production of rice, rainfall is an independent variable and fertilizer is an independent variable. You cannot say if there is a more rainfall, we are going to put more fertilizer or for more fertilizer, you require food. Means both are independent. 
so null hypothesis will be framed like this that rainfall and fertilizer are the independent factor for the growth of rice in uttar pradesh this is will hypothesis you are going to frame and after that you are going to collect the data this data collection will be done by the farmers and that farmer will be from uttar pradesh clear and then you have to perform an appropriate statistical test if you are going to take an chi square test then you have to chi square formula o minus e whole square upon e this is the formula chi square so this is observed value expected value calculated value you take it out and on that you have to put test of an independence means both are independent to each other test of homogeneity and test of goodness of put right so these three tests can be done by the help of chi square test if you are taking f test there are different factors you can use anova you can test if your sample size is less than 30 you can take t test so all this you can take there are different types of statistical test for as your study depends you have to take that test and if now acceptance or rejection if you are taking a small sample that is 30 you have got one calculated value and one is tabular value tabular value is given in the book if your calculated value is less than if your calculated value is less than the tabular value you say that the hypothesis is been accepted means it is accepted and if your tabular value means whatever you have calculated is more than three times more than the calculated value you say that your hypothesis is being rejected so acceptance and rejection is based on the tabular value and the calculated value then present the findings and on the basis of your hypothesis acceptance and rejection you are going to make your findings suggestions and conclusions so this is the whole you can understand that what is hypothesis and why this hypothesis is very important for any of the research study so for all the descriptive study for all the analytical study for all the scientific study for all the uh, scientific studies you have to go with the hypothesis i hope you have understand this and this will be very useful for all the research scholars who are doing research thank you